Good morning and welcome to Worship on this Sunday, the 31st of January, the fourth Sunday after Epiphany here from Old Guru Ashton Parish Church. As you can't join us and share with us in this place today. Obviously there's an empty church except for myself, who are organist, and John and Billy who are seeing to the technical side of things, allowing this to be put out on Facebook Live. We will be celebrating the Sacrament of Holy Communion during the service this morning, so I do hope you'll be able to join with us wherever you are and whatever elements you ha may have with you, be it a cup of tea and a chocolate hobnob or whatever else fulfills that function for you. There are one or two intimations just to say next Sunday we will be doing conducting worship here as usual at 10 o'clock. Next Sunday's service will be slightly different in that it will be mainly a songs of praise service. So we would actually, uh, and I've been welcoming and grateful for all the suggestions and requests for hymns that have been received. It's still not too late if you want to get in touch and request the hymn uh, at minister at ogachurch.org.uk or on 633914, um, where I'd be glad to hear from you. Um, the, some of the hymns that have been requested have been sung recently, so we might not include them at this time, but we will keep, I will keep them in mind for future use once again. But please do get in touch with your favourite hymns. There is also the other um, format of the service available on Facebook uh, as well, um, so please do share with that as well if you'd like. We gather as we always do, it seems that January has flown by to me, I suspect, I don't know whether it is to you, but it certainly feels as though it has to me. And here we are on the last Sunday in January already, the fourth Sunday after Epiphany, and already um, we're starting to think about heading towards Lent and Easter. We had hoped that we'd be in a very different position from where we are now with COVID-19, but we still await further updates from the, um, from the government in terms of more lifting of restrictions that would allow us to reopen. As it's been pointed out, however, the church has never really been closed. We've just moved and migrated onto different ways of doing things through Facebook Live or through Zoom. I would remind you as well that after this service today, there is an informal coffee get together on Zoom and the details have been sent out if you'd like to join us from half 11. We come before God as we always gather in this place. We gather to one and all, wherever you are, whenever you're watching this, we come to be the people of God and to celebrate God's grace and love. We are all welcome in God's presence and we are all welcome in this place. We start every service in Old Guru Ashton with our gathering song, which is welcome everybody, it's good to see you here. And while we start this every Sunday in Old Guru Ashton, it will become a tradition too in St. Ninian's as we join and travel together. And it has been recently in Lylekirk too, as they've had me as their interim moderator. So we join together with, welcome everybody, it's good to see you here, gathering in this place, and we sing it through twice. sides of this format of services that obviously you get to hear me sing, for which I do apologise. I spent four years in university at Trinity College Choir and normally standing up the back and miming. The theory, the theme of today is about the authority of Jesus, looking at that expression of the authority of Jesus 
in the story, the narrative of the beginning of Mark's gospel in particular. Where does authority come from? Who are the authority figures that you've had in your life? You still hear children sometimes being threatened by parents. If you don't do what you're told, I'll tell somebody on you, and whoever that authority figure may be, it used to be, I'll tell your father when he gets home. Or perhaps it would be, there's a policeman, if you don't stop misbehaving, we'll call him over, which was never really helpful to the police, setting them in that sort of position. Positions of authority, how we recognize authority, and how we deal with authority, and how authority is exercised. There is, as I mentioned last week, a move just now by some church leaders to question the right of the Scottish government to have churches closed. And yet that seems counterproductive because why would we question and take legal action against a government that is trying to do the best it can? Not perfectly, no government is, but to do the best it can to protect its citizens. We in the church don't want to be seen as putting our congregations at risk. Far from it. So we come together in this different way in facing an empty church rather than, rather than a church full of people. Normally after singing welcome everybody, I would encourage people to welcome each other into the church. Welcome each other into the body of Christ. Please, wherever you are and whenever you're watching this, please know you are welcomed and you are part of that body. So let's come before God to sing to his glory. One of the freedoms that this does give us is the ability to sing wherever you are. As I said to you in the last few weeks, the only people you can annoy are those in your household and those who are your neighbours. And feel free to annoy them at any time. So we sing together from church, church hymn number four, hymn 356, hymn 356, Meekness and Majesty. Thank you. 
wonderful words of Graham Kendrick and that amazing tune brought together to remind us of the meekness of God and the meekness of Christ, but also the majesty of Christ. The two coming together met in the reality of Jesus. So let us come to read from God's word. We turn to the scriptures of the Old Testament this morning to read from Deuteronomy chapter 18, one of the book of Moses, the Pentateuch, at the start of the Old Testament, as we read from Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verses 15 to 20. So hear these, the, hear then the word of God. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own brothers. You must listen to him, for this is what you asked of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, Let us not hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor see this great fire any more, or we will die. The Lord said to me, what they say is good. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers. I will put my words in his mouth and he will tell them everything I command him. Amen and thanks be to God. These words of Moses given to us in Deuteronomy at verse 18, chapter 18, from verse 8, 15 to 18, really bring to us this idea of the authority of the prophet. It is an authority that is based on the power of God, and it's coming from the people. But also what's interesting is that it, God is indicating it's coming from the people. The Lord said to me, what they say is good, I will raise for them a prophet, because the people have said, let us not hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor see his fire anymore, or we'll die. So the prophet was to be the one who had the authority, and that's what we'll think about in moments to come. We're going to take a time to come before God in prayer now. So let's come before God, let's unite our hearts, let us pray. Meekness and majesty coming together in the unity of the living Christ, the meekness of Christ, the teacher, the healer, the majesty of Christ, the son of God. These two coming together in the unification of love that is the, gro the glory of the living Christ, our Lord and Savior. Father, we come to thank you for you uh, the God of creation, you who brought into your people's lives meekness and brought into our lives the majesty of faith. You, the living God, who breathed life into us, you, the God of creation, who created this wonderful world in which we live, the mountains and the valleys, the rivers and the seas, the power of the created world that has intensity to destroy us, but also the meekness to fulfill us by providing the crops and food that sustain us, the life-giving water that nourishes us. Loving God, we come to you as the Lord of creation. We come to you as the giver of life and the source of love. We come to you as our constant companion and friend. We come to you, one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in an ever-changing world, in a world that we sometimes feel not in control of, or certainly that seems to us at times going in a direction we don't understand. A world that can be frightening, a world that can be challenging, a world that can be unfair and unjust. But the world you created, Lord, is perfect. It is us who make it unfair and unjust. It is us who bring in the element of fear. We offer our thanks to you today, for you have called each one of us as your children. You offer us that link with the eternity 
through the reality of your word. You remind us that while the world changes, while the narrative and story of each nation changes, the one thing that remains secure and complete is you. You are the God of all time and all being. To you, we bring our praise. To you, we turn and worship. To you, O oh Lord, we place ourselves in the hands of the living Christ. To you, O oh God, we seek the empowerment and strength of the Holy Spirit to face all that we do in the journey of our lives. Father, we know that we are far from perfect. We are far from what you want us to be. In the words that come from our lips, in the actions that follow from us, or sometimes even in our inaction. Give us courage to stand up against what, that which is wrong. Give us humility to recognize our own failures. We come to you, O Lord, to confess our sins, whatever they may be. We come to you, O Lord, seeking that you may recognize our ineffectiveness, to recognize all that is unworthy within us and to set us free once more. You do that through the love that is Jesus Christ, the peace that he brings into our lives, the peace that, as he tells us, is beyond all our human understanding. So we confess our sins before you. So we seek your forgiveness, love, and grace. And start on the journey once more. Lord bless us. Comfort us and strengthen us for the journey ahead. And as we take a moment to confess our sins before you. May we know your presence in our lives. Lord in your mercy. Hear the prayers of your people this morning. Lord, in your mercy, set us free to love and to live as you have called us. In Jesus' name, amen. We turn to read from the start of um, Mark's gospel this morning. So we turn to read from Mark chapter 1. We're going to read from Mark chapter 1 and from... Um, Chap verse 21 through to verse 27. So it's Mark chapter 1, verses 21 to 27. And sorry, unfortunately, there's been a slight mix-up in the reading. I think I've sent John the wrong, the wrong order of service. So Mark chapter, 20, Mark chapter 1, verses 21 to 28. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came... Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who had authority, not as teachers of the law. Just then a man in the synagogue who was possessed by an evil spirit cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, said Jesus sternly. Come out of him. The evil spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all so amazed that they asked each other, What is this? A new teaching. And with authority, he even gives orders to evil spirits and they obey him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. Amen. And thanks be to God for these readings of his holy word. So we have the image of the prophet being given the role through, Jesus, through God and here is the authority of Christ being recognized at the very start of Mark's gospel as Jesus drives out an evil spirit, an evil demon and the people are amazed at the new teaching and the authority that it represents. We're going to sing from Mission Praise now. Mission Praise 454, Majesty, 
worship his majesty. We'll sing this through twice. Son and Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Authority and all that it represents. One of the things that I don't do is I don't tend to wear my robes. It is a practical thing for me. It allows me greater movement. For the first eight and a half years of ministry in St. Mary's and Old Parish Church in Hoyt, I think I tripped up the stairs every Sunday morning to the pulpit as I kept on forgetting to lift my robes. Now you could say that's more my own stupidity than anything else. But the reality is the robes set you apart. It gives you a sense of, of authority, I suppose. Indeed, so too does the ministerial uniform of what is convenient, the clerical collar, or as we like to call it, the dog collar. One of the main reasons for wearing it going into places like hospitals or old folks homes is that it makes you immediately recognisable as being a minister. And because otherwise, how would people know? Mind you, you do sometimes get told by people, oh, you look like a minister, which is kind of worrying because I've never really figured out what a minister looks like. As far as I know, there's quite a variety. The position or the idea of the minister as an authoritative figure is important. If you go back into the history of our society, of, of Scottish society, in most Scottish towns or villages, there would be people of authority. And the authoritative figures would be those who would be regarded as being educated. It would be the lawyer. It would be the doctor. It would be the teacher. It would be the minister. Because the Church of Scotland has always had a tradition of educated ministry. It was one of the very important bedrocks of the Reformation that the, ministry, the ministers who were coming out should be educated. And so it is still a requirement for ministers going in to serve as ministers of word and sacrament that they have a university education, which is and also not just the university education that is stopped, but an ongoing process of education. 
Indeed, that process of ongoing education has led me to an act of lunacy, I suspect, in that uh, throughout my divinity degree at Glasgow, I studiously avoided doing languages as I struggled with English. So I didn't have to deal with the complexities of ancient Greek and ancient Hebrew. And yet, in a moment of, as I say, somewhat questionable um, mental ability, I have signed up to do a course on ancient Hebrew starting on Monday night, tomorrow night, for two hours a night for nine weeks. So please think of me in your prayers as I struggle to talk, come to terms and challenge myself a wee bit further. But coming back to the thing of authority, it used to be that you would not call the minister by your first name. By his, or, or, well, at that point, when I was growing up, it was always male until later on, as more female ministers have been accepted into the church. It would always be Mr. Muir. It would always be Mr. Morrison. It would also be um, Mr. Rennie. It wouldn't be by their first names. As a minister, I prefer people to call me by my first name as it means I feel more familiar and I feel more friendly, less intimidating because sometimes being seen as an authority figure can be problematic because it puts you apart. And sometimes you need to break down these barriers to be seen as being part of the community, not censorious to the community. But then again, that has always been part of the ministry as well. It used to be that the church had the power to discipline people. We had punishment seats in the church for sinners who needed to be brought before the court session and judged. Now, thank goodness we've moved away from that. Because when we see God purely in a judgmental context, that the only authority of God is in terms of the God of judgment, then we have a real problem. Because what God shows through the ministry of Jesus Christ and through the ministry of the Gospels is, yes, there is the God of judgment, but there is also the God who gives us the reality and wonder of love. The God who shows compassion. Think about the authority of Christ on the cross in the narrative of the cross where he forgives the two thieves who are crucified next to him. The start of Mark's gospel, Mark doesn't talk about Christmas at all. He goes straight into the story. And the start of Mark's gospel is this narrative of Jesus going to the synagogue. The synagogue where the teachers of the law would be. Those who were learned within the Jewish traditions. Those who had the authority within the Jewish tradition. And here he comes into the synagogue and gives teaching that is totally new. Unheard of. And then his authority is established when he drives out the demon from the man, the possession, the, the demon that had possessed the man. And the people are amazed. The people are amazed at his authority. But what the gospel writers are cleverly doing is linking that authority into the understanding of Deuteronomy, into the understanding of the prophets of the Jewish tradition. The prophets who were given that authority through God and through Moses in Deuteronomy. Here, as we are told in the piece we read, where God thinks it's a good idea that these prophets should be given authority. The prophets were never really popular in Israel and Judah because very often they delivered messages that people didn't want to hear. When things were going good and God was asking of them, then they didn't want to hear. But of course, when things turned bad, they turned to them and blamed them for things going wrong. Being a prophet wasn't the best of jobs, let's be honest. It didn't exactly win you popularity stakes. But you spoke with the authority. But then there were also prophets who were not true prophets. There were always people popping up, making false claims of the authority of God. And that still happens today. It still happens in our society. We've seen it manif manifested so strongly in the current situation in the United States of America where you have some church leaders who have tied themselves so strongly and firmly to the ex-president Trump's bandwagon 
saying that he is almost like a, a gift from God, I would say not so much a gift, more a bit of a nightmare. The reality is that they still seek to try and justify that. But the prophecy that they are, some of them set themselves up as prophets, but they are false prophets. And one of the difficulties that we have is to sift through the false from the true. It is to try and determine, to understand what God is asking us to do. It is to try and understand what is the right path to follow. The authority of the church has now been questioned perhaps probably more than ever. With the coming of the Enlightenment, things that had been taken for granted or just assumed suddenly were open to question. And perhaps more than ever, the church's actions and what it believes in are open to question. But we should not be afraid of that. We shouldn't be afraid of asking questions. We shouldn't even be afraid of doubting. Within the narrative of the Psalms, there is a real undercurrent of questioning and doubting and uncertainty. In Robert Davison's book, The Courage to Doubt, he develops this theme of the fact that doubt is actually a strength. Because when we doubt or question, and when we then interrogate, then we move to a greater understanding and a greater insight into the power and joy and wonder of God. All authority, Jesus says at the end of Matthew's gospel, has been given to me. Go therefore and baptize people of an Go, therefore, and make um, disciples and baptize people. All authority, all authority is given to Jesus. The authority of Christ is as our Savior. The authority of Christ is God-given. He is God. He is the manifestation of God in the physical incarnation. His authority is that of the Father. And so we come to the authority of Christ recognizing that in him there is the power of God. And when we turn to God, we find the authority of creation, the authority of eternity. We are guided by the Holy Spirit. But how is, sometimes we fail to listen, sometimes we fail to understand, to discern what the Spirit is calling us to be, what we are actually asked of of God. We have to be careful that when we as a church speak, that we speak with the truth of God, not the truth that we want to God to speak. There's a difference. And sometimes it's a danger when we put our authority on what God says, rather than recognizing God's authority. The authority of Christ is of the Savior who comes to save the world, to save each one of us from ourselves, to deliver us from our own sinfulness, to deliver us from that that is unworthy and to deliver us into the eternal presence of the living God. The ultimate sign of that authority, I think, is in the bread and wine of communion, the symbols of our sacrament. As we come to share in the sacrament of communion today, we recognize that this is the authority of Christ. The body broken and the blood shed. This is the authority of the living God who offers us salvation. And in these difficult times, in these times of trial and uncertainty, he offers us hope. Hope manifested through Christ who died and rose again. Hope manifested in the authority of the Savior, Jesus Christ. Authority and have authority figures is always important. I was always brought up to look up to the minister, to look up to like teachers, to teach them with respect, to, to treat people with respect, to look up to the doctor, to look up to professors, to look up to people who are able to do other things that I couldn't do, playing the organ, the authority that the organist brings operating the technology that allows us to be broadcast when you're a technical ignorant like me. Everybody has authority in their own way. Everybody should be viewed as being valuable and important to God. Every one of us is a child of God. And we recognize that in God and in Christ, there is the authority 
of eternity. The authority that is shown in a new way. Not a way of power, of putting ourselves above everyone else, of putting ourselves up as, judgment, of, as judgmental over everyone else, but rather the authority that allows us to break down barriers. The authority that allows us to welcome everyone in. Jesus says, baptize everyone. Doesn't put a limit on it. Welcome, we welcome everyone in. The authority that allows us to be an opening, welcoming church. An open, welcoming body of Christ. And where's the authority for that? The authority for that is in the gospel of the living God who calls us to be his people. Because God is the God of justice. Christ is the saviour. The Holy Spirit is the giver of strength and guidance. The authority of God is seen in the cross of Christ. The authority of God is seen in the the images of this sacrament. The authority of God is seen in the power of the water of baptism. The authority of God is seen in each one of us when we live and share as he has called us. Not a censorious authority where we look down our noses at everybody else who doesn't agree with us, but an authority that allows us to be open, welcoming, accepting, because none of us are perfect. None of us have all the answers. That's God's, pro- that's God's domain, not us. So let us come to gather at this table. Let us come to gather at this, the table of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the authority of God, in the authority of Christ, who calls us to be his disciples. Let us come to gather at this table and share together in the knowledge that we are in the presence of God, that he is with us in our daily lives. And that we can share his love one with another in the authority that he has blessed us with. Let us take a moment to come before God in our prayers for others. We will also share in our Lord, the Lord's prayer as we come before God in our prayers just now. Let us pray. You, O Father, are the source of all authority. You, the timeless God, the eternal God. You, the open God and welcoming God. You, the God of judgment as well. You, the God of all being. We bring before you this broken world in which we live. We bring before you a world full of problems, uncertainties, Mm -hmm. doubts and cares. We lay before you a world that is struggling and suffering. We lay before you, Lord, the issues that we have created. And we ask for your indulgence. We ask for your presence, for your love. We ask for your understanding and forgiveness. Today, O Lord, we offer our prayers for the needs of this world. A world dealing with the reality of COVID-19, struggling in so many different ways. Lord, may there be an understanding of the need for all to share the vaccine fairly. No country has one has the right to the vaccine more than another. Lord, may those in power recognize that they do a disservice when the vaccine is kept from other nations because of finance or for some sort of political goal. We pray for wisdom in our leaders that as they continue to navigate the rough waters of the COVID-19 experience, that they may lead us safely through to a new beginning. We recognize the mistakes that have been made, O Lord, Give those who lead us courage to admit their mistakes, to recognize that they are not infallible. Give them humility to recognize, Lord, 
that they are not perfect. Father, we thank you that when they do that, when they recognize their failings, when they recognize their mistakes, their authority is not diminished but is increased. Give your church the same humility, Lord. The same humility to recognize its past feelings. And to recognize where it has failed you. Father, today we offer our prayers for all who struggle with COVID-19. We pray for the health services and the health professionals in all nations. But especially in our own NHS. We thank you for all the staff in our hospitals, cooks, cleaners, porters, right through to surgeons and all within the administrative centre of the, of the health centre service. Be with them and guard them in all the work that they do. We pray for our nursing staff within our homes, our old folks' homes and all the residents thereof. We pray for all those involved in social care in the community through social work and caring companies, helping others in their homes. We pray that you are with all who are ill today, either at home or in hospital. Be with them in their own, in your own way, O oh Lord. Bring them to full healing, whatever that healing may be. And we pray for those who have lost a loved one and struggle with the reality of bereavement, who feel that real pain of loss. Father, bless them, comfort them, we pray. With your authority of love, may you guide them through the darkness of loss. We pray for those who are worried and upset about what the future holds. As they see their jobs, as people see their jobs disappearing, of more bad news in the horizon, the uncertainties that await us as we go through this pandemic experience. Settle troubled hearts, O oh Father. Grant comfort and strength to all who cry out to you. Hear the concerns and the needs of those who cry to you. Be their strength and comfort, we pray. We pray for peace in our broken world. May we learn to put down arms. May we learn to break down barriers. May we learn, Lord, to see in one another the common bond of humanity. Lord Jesus Christ, you came into the world to show a new way. The people were amazed at the authority in which you exercised your ministry. And that, exercise, that ministry was exercised through love. May your love be in all this day, O oh God. May your love be witnessed through your church, through every individual man, woman and child who professes Christ as Lord and Saviour. May your church be seen as a place of welcome, of sharing, of acceptance, of love. Father, hear our own prayers for those who we want to bring before you, our family, friends, neighbours, colleagues, people in the street, people who we know, whatever situation we want to bring to you, Lord, hear our prayers this day as together we offer them before you. And now, as a family, we raise our voices and hearts as one before you in the words of the Lord's Prayer as we say together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. This is the Lord's table. He invites us to share in the feast that he has prepared. This table is open to all who express a faith and belief in the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Saviour in the unity of the Trinity. 
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So as we come before the table, let us sing together hymn 721 from CH4. Hymn 721, We Lay Our Broken World. As we gather at this, the table of our Lord Jesus Christ, as we gather to break bread and share the cup, so let us take a moment to share in the statement of faith. We say together, we are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new who works in other, us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us turn to the sharing of this, our sacrament. Our help is the name of the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that everyone who has faith in him may not perish, but of eternal life. Let us take a moment to join together in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and loving God, as we come to recognize your authority and power this day, as we worship and offer praise, so be with us as we gather at this, your table. Inspire us through the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts, we pray that we may seek to love you in the perfection of your grace. Father, in your faithful love, in the fullness of your mercy, we pray that you may free us from all that binds us, our sinfulness, our sense of loss and regret, the things that cause us problems. Lord, set us free from our sin, we pray. 
and in the great tenderness, create a pure heart in us. Give us a new and steadfast spirit, Lord. Be our saviour again. <coughs> Lord, renew our joy and grant us your peace. Hear these our prayers we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Hear the institution of this holy sacrament. <coughs> Excuse me. Hear the institution of this holy sacrament as it's given to us by St. Paul in Corinthians. Paul writes, the tradition which I handed on to you came to me from the Lord himself, that on the night of his arrest, the Lord Jesus took bread. And after giving thanks to God, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper and said, this cup is a new covenant. Whenever you seal by my blood, whenever you drink it, do this in memory of me. For every time you eat this bread, and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. These symbols of bread and wine are the symbols of the body and blood of Christ. These symbols are for us the authority of God, given to us through him who died and rose again. We come to take this bread and wine apart from all common uses for this holy use, mystery and purpose today. We give, you, we give thanks to God for the reading of his holy word and the recognition of the importance that this sacrament has in the journey of our lives and faith. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites us to share the feast that he has prepared. Come as you are. Come to be part of his family. Come to be part of his church. Come to be nourished, renewed and refreshed. Come to know the authority of the living God. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. We remember that before breaking bread, Jesus gave thanks in prayer. And we're going to follow Christ by deed and word and example. We share in the call to worship, the call to prayer. There will also be the angel song during our prayer and then the Agnes Day at the, uh, as we come before God in the breaking of bread. These responses will be on your screen or on the printed material that has already been sent out. So let us come before God in our worship and at this, his table to break bread together. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God it is right to give our thanks and praise. Lord our God, great and wonderful are all your works. You who is the creator of all life and all being. Today we come to thank you for the gift that is Jesus Christ. Your son who you sent into the world with the full authority of you, the living God. We thank you for Christ amongst us and within us. We thank you for Christ alive in our hearts. Father, we thank you that Jesus, in the living of life, knew the reality of our human experience of joy and sorrows, of happiness and of difficulties. We thank you that through his life and ministry, he showed the full authority of your love. He showed the full authority of your grace by healing the sick. He showed the full openness and wonder of your love by identifying with others that society would reject. We thank you that in obedience to you, Jesus took up his cross and died for us and for all the world. We thank you that you raised him from the dead, O oh Lord, to reign and to live and to reign forevermore. Our Lord, our Savior, our authority of grace. Father, we come to thank you today for all your works. We come to thank you for the wonder of this creation in which we live. We come to thank you for friends and neighbours. We come to thank you for small acts of kindness and, and caring. The phone call out the blue. The kind gift left in the doorstep. The kind words shared in the emails or cards. 
We thank you, Lord, for all these things. Just to know that people care, just to know that somebody else is there for us, means so much. We thank you that you reach out to us in love. You tell us not to worry, to put our trust and faith in you, and that you will be there for us. That you are our shepherd, and we are your sheep, and you care for us, and you love us. All the days of our lives, all the journey of our lives, whatever that journey may lead us through. Father, we thank you that we had come before you as the eternal God, the God of all time and being, that we recognize and bring to you that sense of presence of the past, living here in the present and looking forward to the future, all brought together and manifest through you, the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We gather recognizing that we build on what has been shared and brought into being in the past, that we care for your church in the present and seek to mold it, shape it, and equip it to reach out to people in the future so that generations to come may hear the message as we have heard it that generations to come may know the authority of the living God as we have brought to be, as we have been made known to us that authority. That people in the generations to come may recognize that authority of love, grace, and peace. And so, Lord, with all the angels and with people of faith of all times and places, we lift up our hearts in joyful praise sharing with you in the words of the angel's song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit. Bless us and these your gifts of bread and wine that in communion with Christ our Lord, we may receive his life. In communion with Christ our Lord, we may remain his glad and faithful people. And in communion with Christ our Lord, we may feast with him in the glory of your eternal kingdom. Father, we take this bread and wine from all common uses. <clears throat> For all common uses, we ask you to bless these elements wherever, whatever we are using, whatever we are using them to the benefit and glory of your kingdom. Bless these elements of bread and wine as we take them apart from all common uses for this holy use, mystery, and purpose. And as we share in the breaking of bread, as we share in the gift of your cup of grace, may we know your authority, your freedom, and your love. And may we become dedicated and fit for your acceptance, Lord, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We do this in obedience to Christ's example and command. The night when he's betrayed, Jesus took bread. And after he gave thanks to God, he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in memory of me. In the same way, he took the cup and said, this cup is a new covenant sealed by my blood. Whenever you drink it, do this in memory of me. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us your peace. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ that is broken for you. Do this, remembering him. This cup is a new covenant sealed by Christ's blood which was shed for the sins of many that they might be forgiven. We drink together remembering the blood of Christ shed for us. Christ has died 
Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your goodness to us at this, your table. You have fed us with these physical elements of bread and wine. But you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. And you have assured us of your everlasting love. We pray for the church of Jesus Christ. Especially within our own communities. Our own towns here today. We thank you for this congregation of Old Guru Ashton and St. Ninians. We remember the people of the Lyokurt. We bring before you our brothers and sisters in Westburn. We remember our brothers and sisters in St. John's. In St. Ninian's Roman Catholic Church. In Guruk Community Baptist Church. In St. Bartholomew's Episcopal Church. We remember, Lord, all other groups sharing together in the, God, the gift of your grace. In the gift of your gospel today. All others who gather and share in the authority of you, the living God. We offer to you our community. Those who believe, those who don't. Those who doubt and those who are full of certainty. We pray that all may recognize your love. All may know that they are welcome in your family. We pray for all who are in trouble, whether in body, mind, or spirit, that they may know the comfort and healing of your presence day by day. We pray for our families and friends. May we be sure there is nothing in death or life, nothing in the world as it is or, it shall, or nothing as it shall be, nothing in all creation that can separate them from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Eternal God, we praise you for those who have made known your love and joy. And now rejoice with you in heaven and bring us with them at the last to eat and drink in the glory of your eternal kingdom. Lord, these are prayers we offer to you. This time of worship we bring to you in and through the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour, your Son. And in the name of you, the one eternal God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, who changes not from generation to generation. Amen. So friends, thank you so much for taking time to share, uh, taking time to listen, taking time to join together today. And as you go into the journey of this, your, whatever the journey takes you in the week to come, may you know God's blessing upon you and within you. We're going to close by singing together hymn 449 from CH4. Rejoice, the Lord is King. We then have the benediction and then our song blessing is from Fishy Music as we go now. 449, Rejoice, the Lord is King.
peace, love, joy, hope and strength of the living God. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, descend upon and dwell within your heart this day. Remain with you and be with you. And all whom you love and share the journey, the story of your life with, now and forevermore. Our song blessing as we go now. I say a huge thank you to Hugh, our organist, to John and to Billy for making sure the technical side of things runs so smoothly. Um, I should also apologise to the people of St Margaret's who I omitted from my prayer, which I do apologise most sincerely. Friends, I hope we are able to meet in this place and in all our places of worship sooner rather than later. But whatever you are, until that day comes, please stay safe, stay well, look after yourselves and one another. And thank you for being you.